Well, I didn't have to use my eyes to uh, determine that the macadamia nuts were in flower. Oh, the perfume. My goodness. The tree is so heavily bloomed. Oh, yeah. Flowers all the way up. Yep. Smell something? Mm hmm. Anthurium's looking good. All kind of colors. Well, here we have some Nepenthes. Those are tropical pitcher plants. They're here in the lime tree. And the one has grown all the way up to the top of the tree. Here you can see the flowers sticking up out of the top of the lime. Well, I was just out harvesting bananas this morning. Yeah, that's about it for today. I got to get to work. We got cabbages to plant. Yeah, onions and broccoli and cabbage are all doing great. Oh, they have a very nice head forming there. Nice tight curds. I haven't wrapped on that one yet, but it's sizing up, probably just about ready. Now, yesterday, Kevin went through this patch of soil here, um, and he dug out all of that. That's Wainaku grass runner. Uh, there was a lot in there. It's really hard to kill. You have to disconnect it from all the grass that's out there in the field, otherwise it keeps feeding. Uh, and so. That's been going on for a while. We are finally getting on top of things here. Now we got the lettuce over there, romaine. It's all looking pretty good. And just beyond it, yesterday Kevin set up a row of compost uh, for more cabbages. I have to spread uh, chicken manure and then uh, put the cabbages in. Well, it looks like the word for today is plastic. You know. Oh man, I swear. The, we have a humpback whale that it washed ashore here in Hawaii. Uh, dead. <laughs> okay. And, uh, well, they got some great big old jammers and loaders in there out there moving that whale. And they did an autopsy to try to figure out why did this whale die? Well, poor thing was stuffed full of plastic. <sighs> yeah, they, they mostly it was fishing net commercial fishing net um, but there was also like shrink wrap from around pallets and things like this stuff that the whale saw thought it was like squid or something i guess bit it and swallowed it when well, it got so full of the plastic that it, it couldn't eat anymore um and the, the pairs of thing died from starvation um plastic <laughs> You know, if you live in the middle of the country, you might not notice this, <laughs> okay? Yeah, it's possible, but we have a problem, and it is plastic. Hawaiian beach sand is a high percentage plastic particles. The fish we bring in here are filled with plastic. <laughs> the whales are dying from ingesting plastic and we're not uh, at all far from what they call the mid-Pacific garbage patch, which is mostly plastics floating out there in the middle of the ocean um you know you live in kansas you go oh no this stuff doesn't really exist we don't have plastic's not a problem at all you know pump more oil really you, you wouldn't know you wouldn't know uh you know hawaii is specific it's sort of like you know it, most of us don't have coral reefs right you know, minnesota hasn't got a coral reef neither does maine but florida and hawaii do and only two places in the U.S., other than in Puerto Rico and St. Thomas, you know, and some of the territories, but the only state where we have coral reefs. And uh, the, there's a huge coral reef off the Florida Keys, which is now dying. <laughs> yeah, there's a, in the case of that reef, it is actually a type of disease that's attacking the coral. Um, 
Here in Hawaii, we have our coral bleaching from hot water. When the ocean heats up too much, our coral bleaches and we lose lots of it. But these uh, environmental problems, depending on where you live, uh, that are serious. Oh, dude, the destruction of the world's coral reefs is like, that, man, that's, that's top shelf stuff, okay? Uh, and they're in danger. You wouldn't see it if you're in the middle of the country. Out here, we're sort of like the canary in the coal mine. You know, we see the plastic of the beaches. We find the plastic and the fish. Uh, the garbage patch is not far offshore over here, you know. Uh, as the ocean gets hotter and hotter, uh, the storms get weirder out here. The rain stops in the wet areas, you know, and on and on. Uh, things become evident. Yeah, it's pretty clear. So if you ever wonder why people from Hawaii, you know, are kind of like, oh, they're really environmentalists out there, you know, <laughs> it's because they can see it. That's why, you know, we're confronted with it all the time. We have a bill right now that they introduced into the legislature banning plastic water bottles. Wow. Okay. They know it's hopeless. They already said it, it isn't going to pass. There's no way we can get this through. What it was about was is uh, uh, they were they were waving the flag, yeah. They're they're telling the the industry here we have a significant bottled water industry here in Hawaii. Uh, we have quite a few different bottlers of water, and uh, uh, they're letting them know the end times are coming, folks. You better start figuring out how you're going to deal with this problem because eventually there won't be any more of these plastic water bottles. Um, uh, you know, everybody, when they're born, is born into a world that seems sort of normal to them, you know. And, well, I was born into a world that didn't have a mid-Pacific garbage patch. You know, the sand in Hawaii was not made out of plastic because plastics were not hardly in use at all. They were something very new. Uh, and, and, you know, so this idea to me is weird. And then the whole idea that we buy a bottle of water. Boy, I tell you, I go back to some of the, uh, the biblical references on this stuff, you know, complaining about the neighbors where they will sell the very salt of the earth. You know, this was really considered criminal in biblical days that one would sell salt. Well, I kind of feel the same way about water. Yeah, it's so important. It's such a basic requirement to life. The idea that we sell the stuff in bottles like that is crazy I, I never went the way see I never I never went with this uh, I watched it happen and at the time I had some incredible wells in northern Wisconsin that were pulling fossil glacial water that I, I had a friend and we ran it through a computer that would have been too expensive for me to use otherwise to analyze that water and it was awesome and I considered bottling it when I saw the bottled water thing happening I said hmm I could make a lot of money on these people uh, you know but I in my case, I personally have never bought a bottle of water. It's never happened. It's against my, it's my judgment. I just won't do that. Uh, and so my opinion is that the uh, uh, crazy ones out here. Yeah, there she is. Hi, girl. Yeah, my opinion is that uh, uh, we don't have any need for bottled water. What did we do before they put water in plastic bottles? How did we deal with that? I remember. I was there. <laughs> yeah, we didn't put it in plastic bottles. So, although, you know, people are so used to it now. Oh, I don't know. My partner, yeah, Ellen, who's, you know, more, more environmentally oriented than I am, <laughs> for instance, you know, for years has carried her own bottle. Yeah, she has a, you know, these bottles that she uses to put water in. Uh, everybody else can do the same thing. That's what we used to do. It's called a canteen. Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't have to look like you're in the army, though. They get some pretty, pretty fancy ones these days. Well, anyhow, yeah. So, plastics. Ugh, ugh. Killing whales. Ugh, ugh. Yeah. Well, aloha. Y'all have a nice day. And... Just think about it. Next time you pick up that plastic bottle of water, do you really need that container? 
Yeah, and w- where is it going when you're done with it? So, aloha, folks. Y'all have a wonderful day.